welcome to We Never Met, the podcast where I have interesting strangers on every week. Today, we have Melissa Lee Johnson. That's like the easiest name ever to say, so thank you for that. <laughs> How you doing? I'm good. Thank you. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. So just to start off, can you give people a little background on what you do? My name is Melissa. I'm an illustrator and graphic designer and artist. I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, but I just moved to Tucson, Arizona, like couple weeks ago. Yeah. So that, that's, that's interesting to me. So walk me through that process. Cause so you, you visited there, right. And then Mm -hmm. went back to Milwaukee and then when you visited there, did you buy a house already or (laughs) how did that situation work? Crazy. I I know that sounds very like impulsive as if we just showed up and we're like, Oh, let's just buy a house. This one. Um, Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) My boyfriend, Josh and I, um, we've wanted to move out of Milwaukee for a really long time. Mm-hmm. Like I love Milwaukee, but I had just been there for, I mean, more or less my whole life. I'm from Jackson, Wisconsin, which is like 30, 45 minutes north of Milwaukee. Oh, yeah. And then I went to school in Milwaukee and then I lived there and I was just ready for something different, like totally different. Mm-hmm. If we were going to move, we wanted it to be a whole different world. Like we weren't sure. going to move to another place in the Midwest, you know? Right, so right. we had traveled to a bunch of different places over the last few years. And then of course, you know, that paused with the pandemic. Mm, Sure. Um, And then we uh, did a road trip to the Southwest for the month of January. Um, We checked out New Mexico and Arizona, and we just really liked Tucson. It to me kind of feels like Madison a little bit. There's a really large Mm. university and it's very like, it's an easy place to move to, you know, it's, easy to drive around. It's affordable. People are really friendly. There's tons of amenities. The weather is gorgeous. So Mm -hmm. we just started looking for a house and we were also considering renting, but renting here is weirdly expensive. Hmm. So we uh, just started going on that and it felt a little crazy, but you know, we were like, we're here now. So let's do it now because it's going to be way harder to find a place if we're back in Wisconsin, you know? So We just did it and we got really lucky because the market is like insane right now. Yeah. So we were surprised that we got any, anything at all. It's really hard to buy a house. So first house that I've owned. (laughs) That's gotta be cool though. I mean, that's a cool experience. It is. It was really, it's really exciting. It hasn't sunk in yet because the whole thing was a whirlwind. It was crazy. We drove across the country like three times in the course of a few weeks um, with our dogs. Oh, wow. (laughs) That's while rough. working. It yeah. was just a lot. It was a lot. I'm bouncing back though. It took me a while. I had a few weeks there where I was just like totally wiped out. No. Yeah. I can, I can imagine. Cause I drove from, I've drove driven across the country four times. So mm-hmm. it's a, it's a wild ride. I mean, I went from Milwaukee and drove all the way out to LA and lived in LA. And then when I left LA, I drove all the way back to Milwaukee and then I drove to Portland where I am now. And yeah, so it's it's been wild. It's a hard ride. And those are like some of the farthest places you can drive to. <laughs> it's like Literally, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, as far as you can go. It wasn't that bad at first, but then the last the last drive, my mom actually came with us because we brought both of our cars. So she helped us so we could like rotate and not just be driving for 15 hours a day. And that was really nice. My mom is the best. But yeah. that last yeah. drive, I was just so tired. Like... Because so yeah, how many days did it take you to get down to Tucson? Um, we did it in three days. We One time we did it in two days. How come I can't even remember that? It is all a blur. <laughs> it's all a blur. It's yeah. all a blur. Oh, my yeah. God. Have you ever driven through like Oklahoma and West Texas? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like there's nothing. Yeah. There's, there's nothing, nothing for a long time. And driving through mm-hmm. New Mexico, too, it's like there's mm-hmm. nothing there. Yeah, there's nothing at all. I mean, it's beautiful in a sense in like a very um, barren kind of stark yeah. way. But man, yeah, that dragged yeah. on. <laughs> I always find it interesting because it's like it's all one country, but there's such immensely different pockets of environment. Mm-hmm. here. Yeah, we my family has a lot of we have some friends in Europe because my family hosted a couple of high school exchange students. Sure. And we're still in touch with them. And, you know, we always have to, they still don't really understand 
the distances in America compared mm. to Europe, right? But, yeah. you know, you move, I don't know what the equivalent of Milwaukee to Tucson would be if you lived in like, like Paris Ireland or something. Like Spain or something. I don't know. Yeah. I feel like even further. I feel, I feel like it would be like oh, I'm just saying France to Russia. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 They, they can never really wrap their head around it, you know, because in their mind, like driving across a country, I mean, it's basically the same as driving across a state here. So. Yeah, because I, I lived in Ireland. I studied abroad there for six months. Mm. And it's funny because uh, I was in Limerick, which is on like the west side of, of Ireland. And to go to Dublin, which is on the east side, it took two mm -hmm. hours. And that's the mm -hmm. whole country. <laughs> it took I the know. entire country. So, yeah. Limerick, that's a beautiful name. I yeah, was supposed yeah. to go to Ireland with my sister last summer. But then obviously mm. that got canceled. <laughs> yeah. Highly recommend it. It's a, it's a beautiful place to go for sure. Yeah. We were excited and yeah, yeah. you know, I guess canceled tra travel plans kind of was the least of our concerns at that point. It's pretty low on the list of tragedies <laughs> for the last yeah. year. But. Yeah. I mean, I got my first vaccine yesterday, so I'm on my way yeah. now. Yeah. So oh, you I'm, must be I'm, doing okay though. Yeah. I feel fine. Like I felt completely okay. My arm's a little sore, but other than that, I feel, feel okay. Nice. So just back to you, back to you and, and what you do growing up, were you very interested in the arts? Were you a sort of a kid that like was super into drawing and painting and you sort of knew that you wanted to do this when you got older or did, did, what did it come at like an older age for you? I was just talking to my mom about this on the phone because um, I was trying to remember back. I mean, the clear answer is yes, I was definitely into art when I was a kid. Mm hmm. All I wanted to do was draw and do crafts and read books. Like that's all I wanted to yeah. do as a kid and play outside. I spent a lot of time outside, but you know, I wasn't any more talented than the mm. average kid. Like can a seven year old really be that good at art? <laughs> I think some can. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. I think I was just, you know, average kid. It's just something that I loved way more than most people. And then in middle school, Something happened in my brain where it became this conscious decision that I wanted to get better at art. Like I wanted to learn, mm. I wanted to learn how to draw people accurately. That was like my first pursuit. Oh, that's really um, tough. I know it's very, yeah. I probably was better at drawing people accurately when I was in high school than I am now. Cause it's like what I mm. focused on like very, you know, tunnel vision for a while. You know, I just started taking as many art classes as I could. I had some really good teachers who like saw my passion for art and let me do kind of like special projects. Like I painted mm. some murals when I was in middle school. Um, I wonder if they're still up. They're probably kind of embarrassing. In um, your school, like you painted the murals? Yeah. Like, oh, that's mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. yeah. I haven't painted a mural as an adult, but. And I just took a ton of a ton of art classes. And then I started taking some classes at Myad when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. I did a figure drawing class. I was probably 14 or 15 drawing naked people. <laughs> oh, nice. Was yeah. that was that weird for you at all or no? Were you fine? With no, that? not really. No, no, I'm not very like squeamish about that. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I've, I've, my dad's out like... of the family. Go ahead. Oh, no. I, I was just saying growing up in the Midwest, it's not something that we're yeah. necessarily uh, exposed to, you know? Yeah. 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 My dad's side of the family is Finnish and we have a sauna or people normally say sauna. I always pronounce yeah. it differently. We have a sauna in my parents' house and like Finnish people are just like naked. <laughs> That's a lot. what they're known so, for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so I feel like I was more comfortable about it. It's just very practical. You know what I mean? Like yeah. a body is a body. Everyone is what it got is. One. Yeah. No big yeah. deal. So I did that. And then I did a Myad pre-college program, which is basically like art camp for high schoolers. Um, so I did this summer program. It was, I don't know, maybe five weeks or something. And I like went to Milwaukee and I stayed in the dorms at Myad and took classes every day in the summer, you know, super cool kid that that was my choice of yeah, yeah, yeah. activity. Yeah. yeah. But I loved it. I loved it. So it's, it's something I've been very focused on my whole life. Like I've always loved it. I've always wanted to pursue it. Yeah. And that's yeah. what I did. 
I think even going back to like you really want to draw people realistically, I think that's what tripped me up a lot in middle school and high school, like drawing because I felt like it was very much focused on that and I was terrible at it. And so I just didn't want to do it. You know, like I didn't want to do art in general. Yeah, that's so unfair to kids because there's it's kind of like, do you remember taking timed math quizzes in school? Yeah. Yeah. Like you did a bunch of division problems mm -hmm. and they would see how long it took you. That's never going to come up if you're a mathematician. Like no one's going to yeah. come up to you and be like, this now, quickly. what's 58 yeah. divided by three? Like uh, it's uh, not uh, going to uh, happen. Yeah. Yeah. You're just panicking. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like as, as an illustrator or designer or whatever, it's, you don't have to take a project where they want a realistic rendering of a person. If that's yeah. not what you do, no one's going to come up to you and like demand you know, a graphite portrait of John Lennon or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or just take a picture of them, you know? I mean, if they're alive. Exactly. Just, yeah. Yeah. Just do that. When did you start to sort of, cause you have a very unique style that's like your own. Did that start developing for you very early or is that something that you just, were you experimenting with different ways of, of creating or anything like that? I've experimented a lot. You know, I think you could look back on my, everything I've ever made and see like a thread you know, that mm. runs throughout. Cause I really believe that like everyone has a style or maybe not a style, but kind of a, there's like elements that you gravi gravitate to for whatever sure. reason. So I think you can see that throughout my work. Um, but I didn't really develop the style that I currently work in until college. And then it really solidified after college when I started working dig digitally and doing like professional illustration work. So what are those elements that you sort of like go to and why did you go to those elements specifically like in your mind? Cause everyone's so different, you know, and everyone gravitates towards different things. So like, what was it about those elements of like how you illustrate that you gravitated towards? That's a really good question. I think about that all the time. Um, I did a lot of collage when I was younger I don't know how that started. I, it's just fun, right? And I guess I always mm -hmm. liked kind of crafty things and finding like old books with interesting images in them. I was just very inspired by that. So a lot of cutting and pasting, shifting things around. And now the way that I work is similar in the sense that I draw all of the elements independently and the background independently. And then I can mm -hmm. move everything around as I work. So there's not a... If you were to move a person that I drew, mm. there's not like a white space behind them. Sure. And I think of that as being really similar to that collage style. The difference being that instead of using found images, I'm drawing all the elements myself. Mm -hmm. So I see that as a thread throughout my work. I've always loved to draw people. I don't know why. I just love it. I love, I love how much variety there is out there. It's an end, endlessly interesting subject to me just how people look and who these characters could be and all the different shapes and colors of mm -hmm. the human body I yeah. love that I love using pattern I love using color I've always been really drawn to certain colors in my life I don't know why though I wish I knew why I mean that's that's a good question right like, yeah like what colors specifically are are you drawn to I love like barfy green, like yellow okay. green. And sure, if you sure. can see behind me, I have like a filing cabinet that's like a barfy yellow color. I don't know why I looked up as if like that would change my perspective of your camera. Right. I was like, I don't know if you can oh. see now. I'm backwards yeah. in this camera and it's like really tripping me up. Oh. Um, <laughs> I like love that color. I don't know why. I just adore it. I also love like shades of soft pink it's just such a happy color to me like if I add pink to something I feel like it immediately comes to life and feels more optimistic mm. um I love any color that's found in nature and sometimes it's more subtle than like oh brown and green and the sky is blue mm -hmm. there's all these beautiful colors out in nature that you don't see at first but when yeah. you start looking closely like I'm out here in the desert and I'm just in love with the color palette out here like the different shades of greens there's some beautiful like almost neon yellows in flowers mm. right now the trees are all blooming and I just think it's it's gorgeous so I guess yeah. in a sense my color palette's inspired by nature but I don't know if it would come across that way to most people yeah 
I mean, being out there is so cool because you like, I love cactuses. Like, I think they're just neat. And like the they're like aliens. Yeah. And the uh, and the size at which they grow is amazing. It's mm-hmm. insane. Yeah. There's all these saguaro cactuses out here. You know, like the classic cactus, the big tall mm-hmm. one with the arms, which yeah. like this is really the only part of the country where they grow and they're huge. And I learned that the inside of them, it's wood. There's like a wood skeleton inside. It's the most bizarre thing. Hmm. Like it's you almost like someone, it someone made it, like someone created yeah. a plant and put it there. Yeah. Or it's like there's big giant trees almost, but yeah. You talked about like you're going to that art camp during the summer. Yeah. Is that, was that like a turning point for you when you were like this? Cause I feel like a lot of the time, and I, I've talked to a lot of artists that have this sentiment. It's like, it's hard when you're younger because you don't really get encouraged. I mean, it sounds like you did, but it, it, it sounds, you don't really necessarily a lot of time get encouraged to pursue it as a career. Like it doesn't seem like it's feasible. Um, and people like tell you that. Yeah. And so was that art camp like a big turning point for you and you're like wanting to do this as a, as a job or was it just sort of a fun camp to go to? Probably. I was a pretty serious teenager. Um, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I, uh, you know, some people go to art school because they're like, oh, I don't know what else to do. And like, I guess I like making things. That was not me at all. I was obsessed with making art. Going to that pre-college art camp thing definitely helped me see how it could be a career, especially because the teachers there are all working illustrators, working artists. So clearly mm-hmm. some people figure it out. Yeah, yeah. And it also gave me a good taste of what a realistic illustration assignment could be. Of course, they tailored it to high school students, but yeah, yeah. still, it really kind of solidified my desire to go to art school. I wasn't sure if that's something I wanted to do because I hadn't known anyone who had gone to an art school. You know, my parents went to college, but they went to universities and studied more traditional things. And I heard about my ad some way or another I don't even know how. And after going there and experiencing it, I knew for sure that that's what I wanted to do because my level of focus on art was, it was really high. It was really intense. Um, So like I wanted to go to a school where that's what you did. Yeah. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Yeah. It sounds like you're a, you're a very driven teenager. (laughs) I was, I was headstrong. I'll say that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's good. That's what you need to be when you're when you're trying yeah. to do something, I think. I mean, yeah, yeah, it got me to where I am now, but I was probably a little um, <laughs> unpleasant to be around sometimes. Do you think so? You think that's the case? <laughs> hey, if something, you know, if I was in a class and <laughs> this is so, so dorky of me, if we were like reading a book mm-hmm. that I didn't like, like if I thought it was a shitty book and it shouldn't be part of the curriculum, like I would yeah. bring that up to the teacher. Like, <laughs> whoa, That's, yeah. yeah, that that is. That I was is nice. Intense. Like I was yeah, polite. Yeah. You know, I wasn't like a a shitty kid, but I just I yeah. had opinions and I had not yet like matured enough to develop a filter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't How old understand. Were you when this is happening. How old? Were oh, you? 14, 15, 16. Okay. Sure. Yeah. 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 I didn't understand that maybe people don't want to hear your opinion all the time. <laughs> he didn't get that yet (laughs) at that age yeah i don't think anyone gets that uh, even no it's totally common yeah and it's it's also that it's also that thing of like and i think everyone eventually grows out of this but like thinking that you know best like thinking you know Mm -hmm. more than everyone else it's like Mm -hmm. no this book actually you're wrong this is not good (laughs) right like the whole canon of literature is wrong and i'm right well let's read this one (laughs) you just pick a book off the shelf Um, god old man in the sea by ernest hemingway Oof, man hated that one yeah let's (laughs) kick that off the list let's put put something else in here Uh, no piece of shit I feel, I feel like most kids are like that, though. I feel like that's most of what high school is. Like, most why am kids, I... though, just didn't read it. But I was like, no, yeah. I'm going to, like, put together... I didn't actually do this, but I probably would have, like, put together a PowerPoint presentation explaining to you why this book <laughs> actually sucks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I mean, because most kids, like, they don't say it to the teacher. They'll just say after class, like, oh, we got to read this stupid thing. Like, why are we reading this? This is dumb. Yeah. You know, they won't just say it in front of. So, I mean, that's that's bold. That's a bold kid. You're a bold. I had really good relationships with my teachers, though, especially like in the later half of high school. You know, when you start taking you're able to take more classes that you're interested in. Mm -hmm. So, like, I almost viewed it more as an ongoing discussion 
Um, oh, yeah. yeah. I don't think it came across that way, but like, I don't know. That's, that's how I was thinking of it. Like, I mean, you, know. you were invested, I feel like. At least yes. you were invested. And so I think they probably recognize that, you know? Yes, Even if it, I think so. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I hope so. so <laughs> so we'll see if you go back there and all your murals are painted over and stuff right like this yeah. girl jeez. <laughs> so even uh, like talking about that and going back to that point mm-hmm. you i read that you were very into like illustrating covers of like books yeah and so and you actually got to do that as an adult so yeah. what were you illustrating as a kid like were you taking books that already existed or were you making your own books and so books. when I was a really young kid, I would like write my own books and stories and whatever. But I think a yeah. lot of kids do that. You know, you take a big piece of construction paper and you fold it in half and then you steeple yeah, yeah. loosely for whatever. And, and I'd come up with stories about like horses. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Um, and then as I got older in high school, I took an AP art class and you have to like create like a theme for your portfolio that you submit. So I did like book cover illustration because Mm. I loved reading. I think as you could tell (laughs) from what I was saying earlier, my passion about literature, I loved reading. Um, It it just kind of came natural to me. And I was always really interested in book cover design. Um, I still love going to a bookstore and just looking at all the books. Mm -hmm. I, I could do that all day. It's like endlessly fascinating to me. So that's how I started doing it. You know, I was forced to pick something to focus on because of this one class. And I did, oh, what are some examples? Cat's Cradle by Kurt Vonnegut. That's like still one of my favorite books. I did like The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe. Mm. I think I did like Alice in Wonderland. I did a whole bunch. Um, I know I've done real book covers in my real life, my real professional career. And that's... I have a very hard time kind of processing like when a project is over and being like, I did that. Like Mm -hmm. I, I achieved a goal. So I, it still isn't, you know, yeah, I still haven't wrapped my mind around it, but I know my childhood self would be like incredibly, incredibly proud of me. Yeah. No, I mean, that's super cool to get to do something that you were doing at such a a younger age and do it. Did you do, cause we did this in, I think it was, it had to be elementary school, but we actually like got to get our books like bound and like created. Did you get to do yeah. that? Yeah. I don't know. I don't, that sounds familiar, but I don't know if I did that or maybe if like my sister did that or a friend or something, but that yeah. sounds really familiar. Was it like the spiral, like the black, like spiral bound? No, it was even better than that. So I, oh. it, like, it was like, uh, it was like a smaller like white book and we and so we would like make a cover we'd write a story we'd do all the illustrations and send it off to this company and then they would come back and you actually would get a legit book that's it amazing really cool. you went to a really cool school i guess yeah it was just a public yeah school, or you had like, a really cool art teacher you know yeah and no this was just in regular class like this was just oh in my class. god so I, th- I think I did it a couple of years. There's a couple of books I think I have at my parents' house. But yeah, you would just write a book. You'd do all the illustrations and like format it on pages mm-hmm. and do a cover and stuff and write a little bio about yourself. And then whatever this company was, they would just make a book for you. It was really cool. That sounds amazing, man. Yeah. I would have yeah. loved to do that as a kid. Yeah, no, I, I was I just don't... stapling my own pages together. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that's a way to do it too. I did that too. But yeah, it was a really cool thing because I have like – I don't know what they're about, but I have definitely a couple of books at my parents' house that I have written and illustrated. Sam's original work, you know? Oh, so, and they still have uh, them. That's great. Yeah, they kept everything. We have a whole yeah. room in our house of of my awful art when I was a child and all my siblings' stuff. So, Oh, my God. Yeah. I still have everything from high school, I think. I know we have some childhood artwork around in my parents' house, but... Mm-hmm. I don't, we're not people who like keep a ton of stuff, but mm. there's gotta be some box somewhere. Yeah. I mean, at the time I thought it was like, why are you keeping this? This is like, it's not, I'm like acknowledging oh, that totally. this is not, not even that good, but now I'm like really thankful that I can go look back and see, yeah. s- see this stuff. But I just, I actually saw this on your Instagram. I didn't see it till today, but you won an award oh. last year mm, uh, yeah. at the end of the year, which is cool for a project with Hacienda, right? Like the, the beer cans yeah. you designed. Have you been there? I've been to the, yeah, yeah, no, I've been there. Okay. I was gonna say you don't live in Milwaukee anymore, so I don't know Yeah, if you've been there, but, um, 
yeah, I'm looking at it right now. I got a communication ar- communication arts award, which is really exciting. It's it's one of those things that like design and illustration people just like know about, you know, when you, mm-hmm. when you bring it up. And Hacienda is like the beer is awesome, first of all. Yeah. Second of all, they're awesome because they work with artists um, for their, you know, packaging design and they really give you free reign. And mm. they're also not overly concerned about having like a cohesive look. They're, yeah. they're intentionally eclectic, you know, like they, they want it to be like a, I don't know, like the refrigerator of beer is like a gallery in a way. Right. Rather than like every can looks the same and it's just a different color. Sure. So they're awesome to work with. Like I love working with those guys. I think I'm going to be doing more designs for them soon, which is going to be great. When I found out that I got into the like 2020 illustration competition, I think I was like sitting at my computer desk and I think I probably like spun around and did like, you know, finger guns. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like illustrating can be very boring in the sense that you spend a lot of time just kind of hunkered down by yourself. So mm-hmm. in the rare moments where it's this like, you know, big jolt of excitement, like I remember those moments. So yeah. I was no. super happy. I was really proud. Did you do packaging stuff before that? Was that your first like foray into doing like an illustration that's going to be on an item physically on the world? And I think it was my first packaging design project. Yeah. I mean, I had done a lot of other projects at that point, um, but nothing, nothing packaging related. And Mm -hmm. something I love about the craft beer industry is that it's become this really popular thing to include awesome artwork on the can because it's like, Mm -hmm. why wouldn't you? Right. Right. And I think that is the coolest because then an average person gets to enjoy an awesome craft beer and they also get to enjoy some artwork. Yeah. I almost think about illustration sometimes as like, you know, when moms will like sneak cauliflower into a recipe or whatever and like, yeah. So their kids don't know there's vegetables in there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I sometimes think of illustration that way where it's like it's art and a lot of people are intimidated by art and, you know, or maybe don't take the time to go to a, a gallery or a museum or something like that. Yeah. But illustration is really cool because it can be so much more accessible to the average person and you can just like experience it in your day to day life. You know, you go to buy a beer and then you also get to look at some custom artwork like. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. I think it's the coolest thing ever. Yeah, because it also sort of just reminds you in a small way that like literally art is everywhere. Like Mm -hmm. you can just look around and see art all the time. It's just it's the coolest thing, I think, too. Um, And it's a win for them, I think, because it like makes their beer stand out. Yeah. I mean, how many times have you bought wine or beer or something just because the packaging was cool? Like all the time. (laughs) All the time. That is 99 percent of the, you know. Yeah, yeah. 99% of the time, that's how I choose my beer. <laughs> yeah, because it's, I mean, it's just, it stands out and it's like, oh, this must be good because it looks cool. You know, that's, mm-hmm. that's what I think in my head. But yeah, and I'm like, yeah. bare minimum, at least I'm like supporting this brewery who supports artists. So even if I don't like the beer, I guess like I did kind of my good deed. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> so do you find that your artistic style and the way you illustrate like bleeds into what you're, going to decorate your house like like is the interior design aspect do you think that's a similar thing I think so the that's I always like to think of things as um you're starting with like a white square more or less Mm -hmm. if it's a room or if it's a canvas or a computer screen and you're just working with like shape and line and color and texture it's kind of all the same thing but then the big uh (laughs) <laughs> the big thing that trips me up with like interiors is that it gets really expensive. You have to like buy things. You can't make yeah, everything. Yeah. For sure. For sure. <laughs> but uh, I try to be cohesive in my life with, with what I like, you know, like it, I find that to be inspiring. Like if I dress, dress in a way that connects to the types of things that I make. And if my space connects to the things that I make, like I, I like to be like an intentional 
mm. creator all the time, you know? Yeah. Sometimes it's too much and I need to just chill out and accept what I have. <laughs> I was going to ask, like, does that get exhausting after a while or do you get Yeah, tired? I try to, I'm not trying to be like, oh my God, I'm like an interior designer. I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. but you got to buy lamps for your, for your nightstand. I'm going to buy lamps that I like. How about that? Right. Sure. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Cause you know, sometimes you look at, I mean, I never get to go into these houses, but you see like houses where they have like photos of them and they're a house that an artist lived in and you walk uh-huh. in and you're like, what happened? Like, you yeah. know, like what happened here? Like, this is insane. Who could live in this? You know, it's, I it's know. wild. I know. I, I've never lived anywhere long enough to like have like this crazy house that's, you know, all custom to me and whatever, yeah. but we'll get there. <laughs> Yeah, because it's it's tougher in apartments to do that, you know, because you know that you're going to move eventually. So yeah, totally. Um, and now I have my own house, but I have like no money because I just bought a house. Yeah. <laughs> so it's sort of the trade off, you know. <laughs> yeah. 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 I guess. But uh... still waiting for a couch, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just first things yeah. first. That's the nice thing, though, is that you can sort of curate over time. You know, you're not worried about tomorrow, where you, you can just figure it out eventually. I try to take it slow. So was there a specific thing like that you've enjoyed creating on? Cause you, you've done beer cans and like book covers, magazines. Is there a specific format that you really enjoy creating on or just seeing your art on? I mean, the first thing that comes to mind would be books, book covers, mm-hmm. just because that's what I loved so much growing up. I also like doing illustrations for magazines because uh, like editorial illustrations, because that almost feels like a dying art a little bit. Mm, sure. And that's also something I really admired, especially because a lot of times editorial illustrations, you know, that accompany an article can be pretty conceptual. You know, you're mm-hmm. trying to visually convey like what the article is about and it could be about anything, which is one of the cool things about illustration is like, it's never boring in that you can do an illustration about any topic. Yeah. And I like researching about different topics, but I recently did a, um, like a window installation for Pete's pops. You just interviewed him or you posted an interview with him recently and he just installed it yesterday. So he has a new location and it's like, he has two giant front windows. And so they're like big vinyls that go over the entire window. And that's pretty cool. But sadly I haven't seen them in person. Yeah, no, that's super cool. I think I, like talking about all this and going back to books so often is, do you ever think about writing, like doing a book, like writing a book or anything like that? I would love to, I would love to publish my own children's book. Like there's so many amazing illustrator authors out there. I don't feel like I'm at that point yet, or I don't have like a specific project in mind. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would love to. And my boyfriend is a designer and we talk about doing it together. Sometimes we joke about it being about our chihuahuas because we have two <laughs> chihuahuas that we're like obsessed with. <laughs> yeah. I was going to ask what would be like this, the, what would be the subject matter of it? Yeah. That's our yeah. like mutual passion. <laughs> yeah. Do you have two of them? Mm-hmm. What are their names? Bambi and Sparkle. I like how you laughed beforehand. It's <laughs> like, this is going to, he's going to laugh at this. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. 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 No, we Which, like leaned into the like stripper name yeah, thing. Yeah. Which one do you like better? Oh my gosh. How could you ask such a question? I mean, there's got to be one you prefer. <laughs> well, Bambi, I feel like is like imprinted on me. Like the, mm. they're both rescued. And the day that I met her, um, Cause you, like did rest- you get them both at the same time or different times? Roughly. They were like six weeks apart, but they okay. didn't, they didn't like come together. They weren't gotcha. like yeah, yeah, there. Yeah. yeah. But Bambi, like the first day I met her, mm-hmm. I was like standing at the window waiting for them to drive up and the car drove up and Bambi like popped her head up yeah, yeah, out yeah. of the passenger window and we like locked eyes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I feel like since then, like she's like my little shadow, like she follows me everywhere. Yeah. Like she can be off leash super easily and just will never leave my side. Yeah. Um, she's kind of a bitch though to other people. <laughs> okay. She's definitely very sexist, loves Josh and like my family members. But if you're just like a random dude, mm. she can be a little bit like ankle biting. Sure. Sure. And then sparkle is like less super attached to me. Um, mm. but she is just the sweetest dog. Like she's really fun to like take out in public, you know, like she's yeah. really nice to kids and she's so playful. She is just uh, so sweet, you know? Yeah. 
No, such sure. a sweet dog. I just, I love them. They make me so happy, especially yeah. this past year being home all the time. Like, yeah, I need them. Yeah. It's nice to have a, a companion there for sure. That's always yeah. happy to see you, you know? Yes. Yeah. No, I'm obsessed with them. Anyone who like follows me, if you know me in real life or if you follow me on Instagram, you'll probably notice that I'm a little obsessed. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's good. If you have animals, you should be obsessed with them. That's, yeah. That, they yeah good point. Especially if they're rescues, you know, that, I mean, all animals deserve it, but like, especially the rescue ones that have gone through some hardships, like I know they really deserve it. So Sparkle was a stray. She's, if mm. you ever see her, she's like the prettiest dog ever. She totally looks like she's, you know, we got it from a breeder or something, mm. but she was a stray dog in Milwaukee. And I have to think she wasn't out there for very long because yeah. it was spring when we got her and just like, how long could like a little eight pound dog survive? Not long, probably. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like a few days maybe before, you know, Maddox got hurt. But yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, we have a we have a cat who we got from I think it was Maddox. It had to be Maddox yeah. or something. Yeah. But yeah, she was in a house fire. Like and she she has herpes and Oh my form, god. Which is not like herpes in human form, just yeah. why I it's uh it's like a respiratory thing. So Really? Yeah. So but yeah, she's had all she's had all sorts of tough tough stuff so it's like she deserves now to be treated the best you know because yes, yeah they, they live tough lives you know so but yeah anyways uh you're also did i did i read you're an avid mountain biker is that true do you still mountain bike out there yeah i wouldn't say like avid like okay a lot of people could kick my ass but it's something enthusiastic I, yeah enthusiastic yeah. it's something i love and i've been doing it since i was like 11 or 12 because mm. my dad bikes so it's something I've just always done with him and I really love it. I'm not like a particularly athletic person, <laughs> right? If I like spent all my time going to art camp and like yelling at teachers about books. Yeah. I mean, are we surprised? Yeah. Um, but I love, I love biking in general, um, road biking too. It's just really, I don't know. I just like feel so good when I'm doing it. I rode my bike to go get breakfast this morning at a new, we found a new little like breakfast spot. So yeah, that was gonna say that. it's a great way to like see a city too. Like I'm a big, I'm a big runner and a big biker, and it's like mm -hmm. a great way to introduce yourself to new places and see new things. Yes, you know. I think it's really helped. Well, I've done it my whole life, so I don't really know if I could say helped, but I think it really helps me with navigation um, mm. because yeah. you're not. I mean, when I started biking, especially like you didn't have a phone where you could go on Google Maps and whatever. Yeah. So I got really good with navigation. I like grew up in the country. So, um, you know, yeah. I'd go on big, huge bike rides when I was younger. Yeah. And I love yeah. it. So is, is that what the Finnish are known for as well? Biking? Are they I don't think so. <laughs> nudity and biking. <laughs> those are the two things. <laughs> yeah, those are the two things that they are known oh, for. Man. Um, I mean, they probably bike, right? It's a European country. So it's probably a lot of, a lot of biking, I'm going to guess. I would assume. I would assume. Yeah. Never been there. Uh, talking about your Instagram, though, mm -hmm. you, you are the sauce boss on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> and I wanted to know where that came from. Where, where does sauce boss come from? You know, I really need to like come up with an awesome story about that so I can, you know, have some like lore surrounding yeah, yeah. me. I don't yeah. have a great story. I'm going to guess, I'm going to guess that I was, you know, maybe a little bit stoned when I came up with that in college. <laughs> sure. Just a guess. Yeah. I don't know. I just like made an Instagram account and somehow came up with that name. I bet, I bet there's like some ex-boyfriend or some old roommate or friend who maybe like remembers the yeah. moment of coming up with that. Yeah. And thinking it was hilarious. <laughs> yeah. I don't remember though. It's However, still good. It's still good today. You know, if people remember it, which I love it when people, um, like in real life address me that way. They're like, Oh, are you sauce boss? I'm like, people don't call me that. <laughs> they should though. It's really <laughs> they cool. They should. They should. However, I do love condiments, you know, yeah. and my whole fridge, the whole door, I got to have like every, every condiment out there. Yeah. And I, I do like a, a good, drink too so you know yeah. sauce whatever way you want to look at it for sure it applies yeah. i mean it sticks in your head so it's a good instagram name for sure yeah, yeah yeah i've kept it um for a while i was a little like oh i don't know about this but uh, <laughs> yeah, i don't know if i want to be the sauce boss anymore the, yeah is this like professionally a bad choice <laughs> it, it's never been an issue i don't know yeah it seems it seems to turn out fine it seemed to be okay yeah yeah and just to add to wrap up here, so where can people find? I mean, we just talked about your Instagram handle, which is sauceboss underscore six six six. 
<laughs> just so everyone knows. Uh, what, where can people find like uh, your website and stuff if they want to work with you or like collaborate or reach out or whatever? Yeah, well, I'm on Instagram all the time and my website's also linked on my Instagram. So you can find it through there. It's mm-hmm. Melissa Lee Johnson Art dot com very to the point <laughs> descriptive yeah. yeah yeah um my email address is the same as my website and i also have a project form on my website so you know if you need a little guidance cool in requesting a project yeah i love i love working with people i love working with people who have small businesses and i love working with people who love art yeah well, awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. It was uh, awesome talking to you. Best of luck in the new house and, uh, and decorating, decorating <laughs> the house. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for coming on. Thanks. Hopefully talk, talk another time soon. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs>